Guys, I have a treat for you today because today we are going to be exposing one of the best RTA players. His name is New, and there's a few things about his account that you'd be very surprised to see. Some of his uh, play style is very unconventional. We'll talk about that in a second. But the first thing that may be misleading is you go over here, you see his uh, his G3, you see his name, you see by he's a G3, he's been G3 uh, multiple times, he's been G3 in arena, uh, regular arena as well. Uh, but you see his name, you see his flag, and you see the Shiba Inu, so you automatically assume like, okay, this is a Japanese uh, player on the Japan server. The troll player, that is, that's what he is. He is on the Europe server, so this is a Europe server player. Um, and another thing that you guys are going to be very, uh, very surprised to see is when you think about G3 players, you think about like all these LD5s abusing the most toxic units, etc, etc. Somewhat unconventional of a team. So he picks very aggressively. I'm not saying he first picks Feng Yan Juno, but he very aggressively picks Feng Yan. He very aggressively picks Juno. He likes the bruiser style. He does farm a crap ton. He farms more than you can even imagine farming. Uh, so that's one of the things, one of the, his, his distinct advantages uh, over a lot of other players. He just has a lot of efficiency overall. But it's not like he's, again, Feng Yan Juno. Uh, but it's not like he's using the most ridiculous meta LD crazy teams. He's using just the units that he finds to be effective for his playstyle. So we'll take a look at some of those matches as well. And then we'll also take a look at a couple other things. So this is something you guys are going to find interesting. A lot of times when we think about the PvE meta, we think about like, okay, uh, you got to build Tricaro, you got to build BJ5, etc, etc, etc. He does not do BJ5. He does. I mean, we right now we're just seeing like the single player uh, R5, so we really don't, don't see too much here about like, okay, well, this is why he's not doing BJ5. But he never... From what he says, he never did BJ5. He never cared about BJ5. He doesn't do Tricaru. Uh, if we go over here to Kairos Dungeon, let's take a look at his Tricaru team. That is not there because he doesn't use Tricaru. So that's the team that he uses for Kai That's the team that he uses for there. Uh, he's got he's got the dot team for Giants. Uh, let's take a look at the Necropolis. I just figure you guys might be interested to see some of his unconventional teams. Uh, so he's got that for there. He's got the dots team for this. And then he has for Punisher's Crypt. I assume that he has a double Elven Ranger as well. So those are just some things that you probably would not expect to see on an endgame G3 account. So let's take a look at some of his uh, replays. Let's take a look at some of his runes. And we'll see what we think about all of this stuff. So I wanted to pull up some notes while we uh, take a look at some of his runes to see a little bit of the things that he said. So he says his fastest set is on Wusa, and he doesn't care leaking anything. He said I could just show you everything. Uh, a lot of these units are actually not used. They're, they were used last season a little bit here and there, but he says a lot of the units that are actually in here in his favorites, he doesn't draft that often, uh, if ever, this season. So uh, his fastest set is on Wusa, which is plus 226, which gives Wusa a 200. I'm sorry, not 200. 344 speed Wusa. So, try out speeding that. <laughs> that's that's gonna be that's gonna be painful. Is that on? No, it's not. I, I was gonna say is that on uh, defense, but it's it's on speed H. Actually, it is on defense. Okay, so defense. I'm sure just for just for the 30 speed sub. But Wusa actually does damage on it. I was surprised to see this because Wusa actually does damage based on his max HP. Uh, so you want to you want to have just in general uh, a lot of HP on like just speed HP HP versus uh, speed HP defense on uh, on Wusa. So he's got a 32 speed sub. He's got a 34. That's almost a perfect roll. That's almost perfect. Oh my god! And this could even be higher too. This could be more efficient. Like you take a look at like G3. You're like okay. I'm assuming it's gonna be like super ridiculously like as close to possible um, perfect efficiency, but it, it's not. It's, it still has some more room to go, so we can get a 13 plus 10 on there, uh, if I recall correctly, as the maximum for that. So we do have room for just 4 extra percent efficiency, which, I mean, you know, it's just extra damage and stuff, extra survivability, etc., etc. These are so hard. These ancient runes are so... Should we lock this? We should probably lock this. These ancient runes are so hard to come by the grinds and gems for this. So, yeah, there we go. Nice. Also, he farms... He farms, more so than the dungeons, he farms a crap ton of artifacts. So that's what he's just been farming ever since they came out. He's just been farming artifacts, 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 artifacts. So skill 2 recovery, skill 3 crit damage, skill 3 crit damage is relevant, skill 1 accuracy. Uh, and then we have, what else, damage dealt on all of these different stats, wind, fire, light, dark. Um, and then, of course, the HP, right? Because you want as much HP on Lucy as possible. Uh, I was actually expecting, yeah, I was, I was expecting him to be speed HP, HP. 
But there we go. Also, he has a fast set on Molon, which is plus 207. Plus 207 on Molong. All right, so Molong is on speed. Crit, speed crit rate. Speed crit rate HP. Molong. Very fast set. 31 speed there. I mean, it's a broken set, so of course I was expecting it to be very high speed sub. Um, damage dealt on all of these different stats. Extra defense. I'm surprised to see some of the stats on here, honestly. I'm surprised to see... Um, he just likes to do everything non-meta. I'm surprised to see, like, so much... Like, the defense here, the crit rate here... It's a little bit like what I wouldn't expect. I, w I was expecting more HP, right? I'm not that surprised to see the Swift. Um, I've seen other people do Swift before for Molong. So, additional damage. Molong's got multi-hits on skill 1 and skill 2. So, of course, additional damage is very strong on him in general. Uh, so, yeah. And then we have... What else is... I think this one is fast as well. So, this is 300. And he does... Uh, does he have an Ashir? No, he does not have an Ashir here. So this is a 320 as well, and this is on speed, flat H. I'm actually surprised to see that, and then accuracy over here. 27, 30, uh, bro, oh, oh, I'm tilted already. I'm sorry, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm tilted already to see a violent broken, violent as a broken set. And then a 30 here, like, oh my god, I would use that on an oracle or something like that. Right? This is such a this is such a beautiful speed sub. This is such a beautiful like I I I, I personally I cannot do violent. Uh, I was gonna say personally I cannot do violent as a broken set, but I know for a fact that one of my swift units has a violent broken set. Cause there were a couple thirty plus speed subs on it, so I was like, okay, <laughs> do violent as a broken. So uh, maybe I shouldn't judge if I'm doing the exact same thing. Uh, but it's a different unit, but yeah, 320 speed on the segment. I don't know how much he's picking segment. We'll take a look in a second, because he gives me, he gives me notes, he gave me notes. Units I play to 100% every game, Feng Juno. Units I play most of the time, Rusa, Praha, Leo, Molong, Samoth against Cleave, Gianna, Light Monkey, without reset, guys. Uh, units I sometimes draft, Anvil, Fire Bison, Molly, she is new, so I'm not 100% into it. Cadiz, really unique, only against Molly Ragdoll. Laika against Leo. Nana, really, really rare. I don't really like to abuse that unit. And Bulwark, counter if water unicorn, which never happens. And then we'll take a look at some of the other stuff as well. He asked him, or he, he didn't, he, I asked him other <laughs> I asked him other questions. He didn't ask some other questions. Um, and then... Yeah, we'll take a look at some of the some of the units now, and then we'll like some of the units that he he mentioned. So we took a look at this, we took a look at uh, this, we took a look at this. Let's take a look at some of the other things that he mentioned. He has the Praha, which is plus one fifty speed. Uh, let's take a look. Let me remove my face for a second. Uh, there we go. Uh, got some accuracy. It doesn't have super high resistance on it, but she has just plus one fifty. She's a hundred percent crit rate because oracles cycle forty five percent with skill one as long as they get all three crits. So, uh, she is on Violent. I don't know why I'm so shocked to see... Oh, she's on Violent. Speed 13. S I'm surprised to see the Speed 13, actually. Uh, so, some of these are not as shocking as I kind of expected, to be honest. Speed 19, you know? Well, you, you, you think about, like, Speed 13, Speed 19. Some of you guys are like, I can do that. But it's not just about that. It's also about the rest of the efficiency and knowing when to pick it, uh, etc., etc. So... We'll see some of the additional damage artifacts. 144% of speed. That really scales the best, just in general, of all the additional damage artifacts. We have some HP. We have some attack. Uh, then we have all this additional damage. All of this is going to be stuff that you see on Oracles. And the reason, so... Yeah, the reason that he's using defense and attack on here is just for the additional damage artifacts. It's not because he wanted specifically defense and attack uh, on this Praha. He probably would have rather had HP. <laughs> or maybe he wouldn't. I don't know. We got a crit rate uh, slot for on uh, Mo Long. So maybe he wouldn't have uh, wanted to go for that. But I am assuming that he just wanted this for the additional damage artifacts. Because that's the sa that's the way that I would think about this, right? So I'm surprised to see. I was, ex I'm, I was expecting faster. But uh, then we'll see the runes on the... What else? The Juno, which he actually drafts more than the... I'll uh, see the accuracy on the Juno. He actually drafts that more than he does the Praha, so we've got the speed over here. And we see the crit rate, plus 22 speed sub. And then tr just trying to get as much efficiency as possible from here, 26, 29. 
Let's see. Let's see how. Uh, but this is an ancient rune, also, so this is kind of hard to. It's kind of hard to get. Oh, uh, he do, he does have some good efficiency on it, though. He does have some good efficiency. I don't know why I'm surprised. <laughs> I don't know why I'm surprised. Okay. And he has no... Okay, so he's been aggressively re these ancient... Like, I have so many re for these ancient runes. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to... Like, I'm, I'm just waiting for some, some runes worth re To be honest, I got, like, nothing. I've been farming ancient runes. I just, I just got nothing. He keep getting nothing from those ancient runes. So, yeah. I mean, there's still a couple points away from maximum efficiency, but it's, you know, overall very, very strong for, uh, for all this stuff. Right, and then we have all this addition. So this is, I'm sure, what he wanted on Praha as well. Um, but he just didn't have so much crazy additional damage. So that, uh, with also the HP. So uh, just going for a lot of additional damage on these Oracles. In general, I'm sure we're going to see the same thing on the Ciara. Additional damage, additional damage, additional damage. Additional damage. Skill 2 accuracy plus 12, which is nice. And then extra additional damage. Do we have any bomb damage? We don't have any... No bomb damage on CR. So this is one thing that you guys might be a little bit surprised to see. But a lot of people use these... Uh, in RTA, use these uh, the bombs not necessarily to do big, huge damage. They use CR for turn cycling. They use for a little uh, control with the, uh, with the actual stun. And the additional damage on skill 1. So... This is actually a, uh, let me show you guys again, move my face. Bagel, just take your face off the whole thing. It'll be more pleasant for everyone. Yeah, I know. I'm actually surprised to see her not faster. I was expecting, well, he's also not drafting her all the time, is he? So maybe that's why, <laughs> that's why she's not faster. Uh, if he's not picking her all the time. So yeah, just a lot of additional, we already took a look at that, a lot of additional damage. Uh, but I was su surprised to see this because you usually see CR much, much faster. But again, if he's not using Ciara very much, then that explains why she's not she's not much faster. Uh, let's take a look at the rest of it. Um, what else? Did we, oh, we were supposed to see this one. This bad boy. That's a lot of stats. That's got to be speed and subs, actually. Let's take a look at uh, one of that. Yep. Uh, that's got to be speed and subs. That's got to be like defense, HP, HP. Or defense, defense, HP. No, that's I was wrong. Okay, there's a lot of defense on that though. There's on that's almost enough defense for a for a, a main stat. Okay, and we got 46 defense on that too. Oh my goodness. And then we have a lot of HP here. We have a lot. That's just a lot of stats overall. Lots of defense. 31 defense. 32 defense here. So we just got a lot of stats everywhere and additional damage here and also another thing that you notice is he's got revenge on this so even if it's not even if he doesn't have the revenge buff up he's still going to potentially revenge 15 percent of the time uh and then we have all this extra additional damage just in case he doesn't get a defense break in case he doesn't get a defense break he's going to do just extra additional damage but he already kind of has a thing where he does additional damage uh in addition to that, there's too many. That's a redundant addition, Bagel. That's all these redundant additions. So, yeah, just based on his passive. Um, so, additional damage proportion to your defense whenever you attack. So, it just makes him even stronger. Makes him more Feng Yen-y, right? Bagel, what exactly is... Oh, he's got... Wow. He's got uh, He's got a lot of crit damage on that. Take a look at this. Uh, I don't know why I'm showing you... I mean, the accuracy is not... For Leo, you do kind of need accuracy. It could be in artifacts, though. Um, but yeah, it's just a, quite a significant amount of crit damage uh, in there. So he is on attack, crit damage, HP. Nice stats overall. Nice efficiency, right? A lot of crit damage, man. This, this guy's going to hit pretty hard. And he's got uh, a, a two set of nemesis. So damage dealt on water, damage dealt on wind, attack increasing effect. Because you're not going to be really hitting too many. Fo or you're going to not be focusing if you can help it. A whole lot of fire units on uh, with Leo and, uh, anyway. So, skill 2 crit damage, single target crit damage on your turn, crit damage if the enemy's HP condition is good, etc, etc. So he picks this unit a lot as well. That's gonna, that's really gonna hit hard, this Leo. Uh, what else did he say he picks often that we didn't already take a look at? Because I already scrolled way past it. Uh, Rusa Praha, Leo Malone. Uh, Samoth against Cleave. Oh, yeah, we uh, we were on the Samoth, weren't we, when we first started the thing. So, plus 2730, 214 crit damage, 
that's going to hit very, very hard. Not even worrying about the speed. He's just like, it's just there to come back from the dead and obliterate things, if possible. So, as long as the enemy has uh, is, is squishy. So, if they're fast, then squishy. Look at this. Look at this crazy. So, this is just on Fatal. It's not even on Rage. It's on Fatal. Uh, just attack or damage attack. Just trying to get as much stats as possible. Try to do as much damage with that revive as possible. 22% crit damage. 25% attack. Uh, skill 3 crit damage plus 19. Attack increasing effect. Uh, skill 1 accuracy. Less important about that. And just extra crit damage. Crit damage if the enemy's HP condition is good. Crit damage if the enemy's HP condition is bad. And then damage dealt on just whatever. Damage dealt on as much as valuable as you can. Um, and then also I think would be interesting is the... Well, not interesting, but like valuable is the... Oh, yeah, it's here. Attack plus portion to lost HP. Because he comes back from the dead and he has very little HP, so... That's going to give you some nice value there. But that's against the aggressive uh, teams that are going to try to CC you and kill you. Uh, he just comes back from the dead. As long as there's no resets. Shung Peng is very strong into uh, Samoth, though. So, uh, what else did he say? Annabelle, Fire, Bison, Molly. Let's take a look at the Molly. She is on speed, HP, HP. It's fairly this is just a fairly standard Molly build. Plus 153. Actually, this looks exactly like my Molly. That looks exactly like my... Uh, more more defense. He has more defense. But aside from that, that looks exactly like my Molly. Um, but, Mo I mean, Molly's standard, right? Skill 3 recovery, skill 2 crit. This is irrelevant. This is kind of irrelevant because it's got... You know, it doesn't matter. Additional damage is not strong on Molly because she doesn't multi-hit. Um, speed plus portion to lost HP. It's the, the recovery is the strongest one on Molly. And then also, like, damage received. Uh, is going to be strong on Molly as well. Speed increasing effect, damage received from fire, damage received from water, minus 20%, damage received from wind. So, there we go. And then a lot of HP. Uh, he's got some defense on her, but I'm sure he just... He's, this is just for the subs. This is not for the... Specifically that he wanted specific defense. So, um, yeah. Uh, and then I have... Oh, not I, not I have. This is not my account. Then I have. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Annabelle Fire Bison... We have, he does have a Cadiz, so he does, he is a dirty LD abuser for his one LD. Uh, let's see what the runes are on, K so this is just a super low crit rate Cadiz, like he said, yeah, he said Cadiz against the Molly Ragdoll, so that's the specific use for Cadiz, uh, speed HP HP, just against the Molly Ragdoll, interesting. Additional damage artifacts, okay, so that's, this is just all, this is the only place he's getting his damage, is the, the damage artifacts. I mean, he does have some attack power on it, but it's just built like a tank. It's not built for crit damage. It's not built to do a whole ton of damage. Only he's got multi hits though, so that's that's why. He's got attack age reduction. He's got the uh, block beneficial effects, etc., etc., and then the brands, etc., etc. So uh, what else does he? So this is just a very this is very unconventional Cadiz build. A lot of people that run Cadiz, I want to say like everyone that runs Cadiz does not run Cadiz like this. So. Uh, what else does he... Oh, right, we said Annabelle Fire Bison, which is eh, fairly standard. Fire Bison, fairly standard. Very tanky Fire Bison, 53,000 HP. Uh, let's take a look at the accuracy on him. 74% accuracy. Um, I think mine is... Let me take a look at mine. Yeah, mine is faster, but less tanky. Yeah. Less, less rune efficiency. But he's faster. So tanky. Oh my god, so tanky. Okay, so, uh, yep, speed, HP, HP, which is just the standard build for him. Just lots of speed, lots of tankiness, and some accuracy. And then additional damage, right? Additional damage is kind of the meta for a lot of the units in RT. Like, anything that multi-hits, like, that's why we're seeing, like, a, excuse me, that's why we're seeing a more bruiser meta. It's just that there's, the additional damage in artifacts is so strong that people are just getting their damage from there. And they're like, yeah, let me just use a bruiser team and, and, and do that as my damage instead of doing cleaves, right? So all this additional damage, all this additional damage, additional damage. Same thing with the Oracle, same thing with everything else. He's just using things that multi-hit, uh, like a lot of people uh, are, just do, using things that multi-hit that do extra additional damage. Uh, and then we have, I'm actually curious to see, like, the Molly specifically against mine you guys are like we don't really care bega wow that is that is almost guys that is can you even see the stats that is very very similar to mine he does have more defense though but it's and i have a little bit more attack the attack power is completely pointless on molly but uh yeah that's that's too too off the speed like a 
like a hundred off the HP. Very, very, very similar. But it's a fairly, it's a, it's just the standard Molly build. It's just the standard Molly build. It's not anything too shocking or crazy. Okay, so let's see what we have on here. We have 100% resistance is a thing. Oh, I, I think my face was covering this, but yeah, this is 100% uh, resistance on this Molly. But the things that cleanse are generally 100% uh, resistance nowadays. Although, I mean, it's RNG whether it works or not. So sometimes I kind of feel like it's a wasted stat. Even though I know it's the meta, I still kind of feel like it's a waste of stat. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Then you're like, oh, I would have loved to have HP. At least HP, you know it's going to work, right? You know that you're going to have that HP. It's not going to just, like, disappear <laughs> one day and be like, oh, it's RNG. You don't have that HP this match. You're like, wait, wait, what? I don't have that HP? My unit only has plus 10,000 HP, not plus 30,000? Oh, that sucks. Um... Okay, so let's take a look at the runes here. We got speed, HP, and HP. Not that surprising. You could put some attack power. If you have like a good attack uh, percentage or a good defense percentage, you could also put that on here. I see some people going with uh, some resistance on slot six. If they have very, very efficient stats overall, I see some people going. Uh, but he has enough um, resistance and subs that he actually does not need to do that. So, yeah, did I show? 100% resistance, 100% resistance. But yeah, she Annabelle needs a lot of stats because she she does heal based on attack power. So recovery is portion to your max HP. Oh, it's uh, I forgot that it was actually changed to max HP and attack power uh, a while ago. That's not even that new of a thing. But yeah, it was just attack power in the beginning, and now it's max HP and attack power. That was that was quite a while ago. I should have not forgot about that. But yeah, this is just based on. Uh, so it's actually a little bit easier to ruin uh, Annabelle. You don't need as much attack power. But yeah, uh, I'm sure he has additional damage and artifacts on here because this multi hits three times. So let's see, uh, let's see what he has here. Skill three accuracy, defense portion to lost HP. Skill two recovery, skill one accuracy, and then he has. Oh, he doesn't have additional damage because uh, I know a lot of people like to do additional damage on these uh, cult girls just in general. So we've got damage received from all these things, damage received from water, uh, and then we have yeah, just the accuracy, defense plus, skill two recovery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so what do we see after that? I think we basically saw... Oh, Laika. Yeah, let's see Laika. So Laika is on attack, crit damage, HP. He is fairly tanky, considering. He's got 202 crit damage. Uh, the other stats are not really anything to even look at. But he is just here. He said that he was picking this against Leo's. So I think he said Leo Ragdoll. Laika against Leo. Uh, like is also good against the Ragdoll as well. Uh, Nana really, really rare. I don't like to have used that unit and Bulwark counter if water. Let's 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 see if he really doesn't like to abuse that unit. Let's let's see let's see let's see. So uh, yeah, like a Nana and Bulwark. So let's take a look at those. Here's the Bulwark. Here's the stats on Bulwark. Sometimes people like to do high resistance on Bulwark as well. Which he does not. He's got not that crazy resistance on him. He's just got the... Uh, yep. This is kind of a fairly standard Bulwark thing. Um, is to just have him on Revenge and Shield and Will. And then he works. Because he, he doesn't need to like Violent Proc to do anything crazy. It's like if he Violent Procs, you're really not going to get that much use out of him. Unless he's got four stacks and then he Violent... Like, and he does skill one, he steals something. And then he's got the five stacks and then he Violent Procs. But you really don't need... Uh, you really don't need Violent for Bulwark. So it's kind of this has just been a kind of standard build for a while, um, but he's just he's a niche unit. You can also use him against. I mean, you use him against Wusas. You can use him also against uh, Frans and Lulus and things like that. You can use him against uh, Fire Liches, which I think we did. We see that in SWC. I think I might have mentioned that in the SWC video. Um, but yeah, Bulwark is kind of like a, a cheat code against uh, against Antares because Antares is gonna stack him whether he wants to or not, right? So, I remember when Bulwark first came out, we were like, how do we beat him? We don't know how to beat him. Like, and then we're like, oh, just don't buff. <laughs> and, then you, and then you just beat Bulwark. He just does so much damage and heals every single turn. It was like, it was at the very beginning when he first came out, it was very toxic. Until we figured it, like, it, it took a couple days to, like, realize, like, oh, just don't stack. Okay. Um, so, yeah. And then... Fun facts. Now you just think about it like it's obvious, but before it was uh, and Nana. Okay, but we saw we saw the uh, we saw the, the Leica, right? Uh, let's take a look at the Leica artifacts. Single target crit damage, damage by counterattack, life drain, which is good on Leica. We see also life drain recovery, good on Leica. 
Uh, skill one, that's the one that uh, heals as well. So it's got a heal. Uh, and then we have, yep, extra crit damage. Crit damage, crit damage, crit damage. And then I'm sure this is just for, like, this is probably not intended to be defense specifically. He just liked the subs, so uh, so he went uh, he went with that one. That seems to be the case for, uh, for a few of these. And then we have this one, which is fairly standard. You just see it on uh, Despair Will, so speed. Because she doesn't really do much if she Valent procs. Like, if she Valent procs from a defense break, it's like, what can she do? Her skill three is just a passive anyway, so. Um, yeah, so just speed, HP, HP. Not anything too crazy. We're seeing like some of these subs. 13 speed sub. Not that shocking. Not not too ridiculous, guys. You can definitely get additional damage. But she doesn't multi-hit. Oh, the two times. But really... Really... Uh, this was probably on something else and he stuck it on her. I'm surprised to see the... N I mean, the, the first skill. But that's really... I, I would have done a little bit differently, but it's not about like we're, we're not here to see my opinion on things. We're here to just see uh, how he how he built it, right? So I just personally would have done a little bit differently. I would have gone for a little bit different substats uh, on there to try to mitigate some of the damage because all she's really doing the additional damage. She's she's got two uh, two hits here, and that's where she's doing the additional damage. So she's not gonna cycle a whole crap ton of turns like the oracles are. The oracles got three hits, and then they also cycle turns, so they get more turns to do more three hits. Uh, and it kind of gets nasty when you keep going uh, with that, right? Or also the, like, for example, Diana's got multi-hits as well. Uh, Ethna's got multi-hits as well. Uh, Bison's going to cycle turns, and he's got multi-hits. Uh, this one's got a couple skills that do multi-hits. So, text three times, text uh, three times, etc., etc. So, uh, what else did we say we were going to show? We got the Nana? We got the Nana. Okay. Uh, the rest of the stuff... I believe is Coco last pl so so just as a like a little recap of like what the other stuff is let's go take a look real quick at these things uh, Coco he said um, this is just on attack HP attack over here you guys can pause the video or whatever if you want uh, played last season against Ragdoll Molly this season not a single time Shizuka only 2v2 he says that's the only place he's using Shizuka HP, HP, and resistance. Um, I think Shiz I think actually Shizuka is uh, is important to have resistance on. I have Shizuka on the Asian server, and I noticed that like Shizuka with resistance because she is a she is a reactionary unit. She's not a proactive unit. She is. I mean, you could use her in a proactive way, but she's more reacting to enemies trying to uh, enemies trying to debuff you and all these different things. So um, yeah, she is generally really good idea to have high resistance and accuracy on her. She doesn't need crit rate, crit damage, attack. She just needs tankiness, speed, and uh, resistance and accuracy. Um, and, the, and making sure you pick her in the right situation. Uh, Sekhmet, if I feel the enemy has mo long damage, uh, nothing else damage. So Sekhmet does his job, reset the damage, and that's it. Nearly never pick. Oh, we were taking a look at Sekhmet stuff, and he doesn't even pick her. Uh, what damage is just there to fill the site? <laughs> and special league. Ethna never picked. Is still a never picked. Wang uh, played him last season. Now never. Okay, so he's not even using these units. Fantastic. Defense HP H. Really? So that's a little bit different than I have uh, than I have mine. Uh, but again, he's not he's not even picking it. So then we have the Ethna, which is on speed crit rate attack. These are the stats, additional damage. See, this is the one that I'm, I'm not surprised to see additional because she's got multi-hits with skill two, uh, AOE multi-hits, and then she's got five times uh, over here with skill three. So additional damage is very strong on her. Uh, she's got 99% crit rate. Uh, she could have higher accuracy, but the accuracy in artifacts, but even so, I don't know why I'm looking at her leader skill. Uh, do we have accuracy in... We don't have skill three accuracy. Okay, so could use some more accuracy there. Uh, what else did he say? Asylan never, so Asylan's never picked, but this is the runes on Asylan, just in case you guys are curious, because uh, Asylan is a nice reactionary unit, uh, and additional damage, because he's got multi-hits that do, he's got two shots here, he's got uh, four shots here, and then he's got also multi-hit uh, supportive fire. Um, Daphnis against Nana guys without high speed, and Diana, uh, ban Nana, one shot with Daphnis, uh, or against Ikari's Mo Long, one shot Ikari's. Um... And there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of units that he's really not using that are even in here. 
So we basically, we basically, oh, we didn't show the Diana. We didn't show the Diana stats. So these are Diana stats. She's on HP for damage HP. And then she's got additional damage. Additional ma damage makes a lot of sense with all her cycling and all her multi hits too. Uh, you can kind of almost get away with not even having. Uh, I like to have a little bit of accuracy at least on Diana, but she's got, you know, again, she's got multi hits. So if she needs to strip things, she's got several chances to strip things. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, you can kind of get away. He does have a decent amount of that's more H uh, attack power than I have on mine. Well, I have more HP on mine, but he's got definitely more attack power. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, since she, since the additional damage in artifacts, she's got multi hits with skill two uh, in human form. You don't, you can like people that are like in mid game that are trying to use that. I'm like, man, I can't get all the crit rate plus all the HP plus all the stats that I need. Uh, to, to put her on crit damage, you could opt for a crit rate one. It's not the end of the world if you can get an efficient crit rate rune uh, and try to get like a lot of speed, HP, defense, maybe some crit damage, attack, etc., etc. on there. Um, just an efficient rune overall. Uh, and then get some of that extra additional damage artifacts and have her do the additional damage. Uh, have, have her do the damage that way. Oh my god, I feel like I'm just like tongue twisting, tongue tying myself. Um... I think we showed for the most part, does he? Oh, he apparently is not even using this too much. But these are the stats on this, just in case you guys are curious. Because, I mean, we're, we're already here. We may as well take a look. Even if he's not really using these things, he's using the Leica in the same situation as one would use that. Here is the stats on the Daphnis. Uh, there's the accuracy on the Daphnis, but we might see some accuracy in subs. You never know. So he's on speed, crit damage, attack. Not that surprising. We got extra damage dealt. We have skill three crit damage, which is the one that he really wanted, right? That's the one that he really wanted. Um, it's hard to make a good Daphnis though, especially with his base speed not being that crazy, to make sure that he has all the speed, all the attack, all the crit rate, all the crit damage, and the accuracy that you need for him. Like he's sacrificed so much defense and HP in the process. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Daphnis does need the, I mean, he, he does need the accuracy. He does need the crit rate. He does need the speed. He needs so much stats. It's hard to make a very good Daphnis. Faint Memory had like an insane Daphnis. Um, I don't remember these stats off the back, of, like off the top of my head, but uh, he had an insane Daphnis. But he's also got insane runes just in general. Here's the Tessarion runes. Uh, I don't know that he's necessarily using this. He didn't mention anything about Tessarion specifically, but you know, it's against passives. It's not that surprising to see like what Tessarion is used against. He's got the accuracy over here. Uh, and yeah, he's apparently just, I mean, I, I assume that maybe his crit rate crit damage is low because he's using it against Artemis and, or he would in, he would be using it against Artemis and ragdolls and things like that. So I assume that that's why that would be, you know, not really too focused on crit rate crit damage. Uh, and then we have, what else do we say? Everything can use in most of the time, either four or five units. Sometimes it's maybe eight. Nine, nine, nine. No second awakenings, no LD5 abuse. Cadiz is really rare. Uh, I don't have Tricari, I don't have BJ5. I don't even have Lulu 2A. I just play whatever's in my mind, and it works. High efficiency. High efficiency. Uh, did we see everything else over here? Let's take a look at some of the actual. I mean, he's, I don't think he's even using this. Yeah, he's not even using this, but there we go. Guy's like, yeah, that's better than my stuff, and he's not even using it. Yep. There we go. Skill two accuracy is so so nice for uh, Vanessa. Although skill one accuracy is now nice as well, uh, on the off chance that it actually activates. But uh, you you know you don't really need that much accuracy on Vanessa. Just that that defense break is nice to have, right? So we almost didn't take a look at the Abelio. So let's take a look at the Abelio stats. He is on defense, crit damage, defense over here. Uh, and then he's got, like I said, he's not even using the, he's not even using the Abelio. So I just wanted to show you guys the stats just in case you're curious. Um, also, I do like him to have, this is the accuracy that he has over, yeah, 20% accuracy. But I do actually think that uh, Abelio actually needs a lot of stats. It's very hard to make a good Abelio. It's very hard to make a good Abelio. It's very hard to make a good um, Daphnis. It's very, there's some units that is like very, very stat hungry. Uh, units, but in my opinion, Abelio needs speed, defense, HP, crit rate, crit damage, and resistance and accuracy are also very nice uh, for him as well. 
because you want him to cut in and heal. You don't want him to get like CC'd or reset or things like that. But you could say that about anything, right? So uh, he's kind of a little bit squishy on the HP side, but he's got like a crazy amount of defense. His multipliers, if I recall, recall correctly, are not as high as Tyrannus, or is that just his base stats are not as high as Tyrannus? Oh, we didn't even take a look at uh, Tyrannus. So uh, 747 versus 834, but I think it's the multipliers actually that aren't as high as Tyrannus. Uh, so Tyrannus is just speed crit damage defense. So these are just defense-based bruisers uh, over here that um, Tyrannus revives. You guys know what Tyrannus does. You guys know what Abelia does. But he's not even playing these units, so it doesn't really matter too much. I just wanted to show you guys, just in case you're curious on the stats on them. Here are the stats on these things. So here's the stats on all the things that he doesn't play. Lulz. There we go. All right, let's take a look at some matches, and we'll see. we'll see how he how he drafts and what he does. Now let's take a look at some of these uh, replays from his from his battles, going for just super tanky stuff, super tanky stuff. He's got a few heals, he's got some heals with the Feng. I mean, the Feng Yan was the definite ban since the enemy was picking just a crap ton of water units. Feng is gonna be super strong into those, um, just in general, but yeah. Let's see how this winds up playing out. He's got the stun on the Annabelle. Let's see. He only gets one provoke. I really feel like I, I I feel like the enemy has has the advantage. I really do, but it's all about stats. Let's see let's see how much all of the extra tankiness that he has on these units. Uh, let's see how much this crit rate on uh, on Mo Long really comes into play. Lulz. All right, so as soon as he takes the Mo Long down, but see that's why I'm surprised to see the crit rate on the on on Mo Long though. I really am. I don't know, guys. I don't know. And then he's down. But he would still be alive if he if he if he didn't have crit rate. If he had, crit, uh, I was gonna say on crit damage. No, Bega. That's also that's not. You don't want crit damage on Molong. Uh, well, some people have actually done crit damage on Molong as well. But um, I just like to make Molong tanky. I don't do no crit rate. I don't do no crit damage. I was doing crit damage Wusa, but uh, with his new buff, uh, there's no reason to do crit damage on Wusa anymore. So I feel like his uh, his opponent has a, a, a definite advantage though. Like just having all having the element advantage and then having uh, more damage output as well as more um, not cycling, but yeah. So he just found an opening to do uh, Wusa skill too. That's really that's really what did it this time. So and then as soon as Wusa gets another turn, I'm sure he's gonna go for the. Um, not that. I was going to say, I'm sure he's going to go for a skill 2 on the Miles. So, I got hit by this team. Maybe not hit. <laughs> I didn't get hit by this team. I fought a team similar to this on the Yerp server recently. Actually. And I was like, this is a wacky team I was not expecting to fight today. But, uh, yeah. Additional damage and artifacts. Look at that. Additional damage and artifacts. And then also, who's his skill 2 being super strong now. That sucks because I feel like his opponent had the advantage at the pick ban phase. And I feel like just his farming a crazy amount of artifacts and trying to get as efficient as possible actually is what won him the game. I that's that's really what it feels like. X match, he says he's not a dirty nana abuser, but we see that he is clearly a dirty nana abuser. So let's see what winds up happening here against the Molong Diana Ragdoll. Let's the Molong Diana through. He bans out the light pi he bans out the light pioneer. See, I would have ban I would have banned definitely. I wouldn't have banned the light pioneer. I would have banned like He's got the crit rate on the the Juno though. That's going to cycle. See, I would have I, I mean, I'm not G3, so I would I would have done things a little bit differently though. But that's just uh that's just me. I I, I wouldn't have been too threatened by the all right, but she's coming back from the dead. Yeah, I wouldn't have been too threatened by that uh, light pioneer. I'm really surprised that that was the ban. I like that there's a lot. <laughs> there seems to be a lot. I wonder how many more Annabelles we, we see into this, right? Because there seems to be some Annabelles being picked so far. So, gets a few multi hits into that. Does he go for it? Actually kills the Juno. Okay. And then as soon as he takes a. I was going to say, as soon as he takes some more damage with that. So, opponent is playing pretty conservatively. And then gets a stack. Okay. So now he's in good... Is this going to be a crazy Feng Yan solo? 
I kind of... I, I both want and don't want to see a crazy Feng Yan solo. Sequential attacks. Takes down the Mo Long. Another stack on the... So he is a, he is a dirty Nana abuser. That's what we're seeing. Don't tell me you're not a dirty Nana abuser. He's a dirty Nana abuser. Uh, get some damage into the Ragdoll. Okay. He's got the stack though. He's got the stack. Does he get some stuns here? He does get a stun on the Annabelle. Some additional da additional damage and artifacts. Look how look how nice those additional damage artifacts are. Yeah, it's the artifact. The artifacts are really are really doing a lot for him. Next match, I'm gonna judge him if he picks. Well, I was gonna say I'm gonna judge him if, if he picks Nana again, but his opponent clearly picked Nana, so it doesn't. There's there's no way he could possibly pick Nana. Uh, so goes for again Juno Feng Yen. He goes for the Feng Yen at the end. He goes for the Wusa, and he said he was using Wusa even before the buff, which is, to be honest, not that surprising. There's and segment cut you know what segment cuts but there is a significant difference in speed between the wusa and the segment so that's not that surprising that she cut but yeah i i uh was liking to use wusa i liked to use wusa for quite a while until shung pung hei gang and Jogun became uh <laughs> got brought into the game and then i was like oh, i'm not gonna use wusa anymore it's too much there's too much aggressive strip strips and cooldowns and i'm like i can't i can't pick wusa effectively as much as i used to be able to so yeah but just with with the amount of damage that he does now especially the meta changing but i still feel like i feel like he's kind of i don't want to say this but i kind of do want to say this because it's just how i feel i feel like he's kind of a little bit overrated because he still is susceptible to a lot of He's still susceptible to a lot of control and strips. Uh, the only issue is that a lot of people bring him in with, you know, Tian Langs and Ragdolls and things like that. And it's like, okay, well, if you're going to bring Wusa and Tian Lang and Ragdoll, then, yeah. How has he come back? Don't tell me Juno solos this. Don't, don't you tell me Juno solos this. Oh my god. This luck sack and... I'm fine, guys. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. No, I'm not. I'm not tilted. I'm not gonna call him a luck sacker. I'm not gonna call him that at all. Oh my god. Oh, oh my. I have no words. I have no. I have no words. I have no words. Oh my god. Increase. He's not even using skill two. He's just using skill one. He's just skill one luck luck sack machine. Wow. How phones were thrown in this match. I'm just letting you know, phones were thrown. First pick Wusa into a Nana and a Diana and Molong and Molong thing, yeah, Juno. And opponent starts picking a whole bunch of LDs after that. Okay, so let's see let's see what winds up happening here. Bans the Leo. Alright. Is this gonna be a so oh right, swift, swift, swift. So that's a two-shot kill. And then what happens? And then Diana just uh, goes crazy. Diana nukes. A lot of people not expecting a... I mean, they're expecting a very fast... Um, very fast Wusa, but I'm sure they're not expecting a very fast uh, Mo Long. Although, I've seen it before. I'm sure you guys have seen it before as well. Uh, that some people run super fast Mo Longs. But, um, but yeah, I think a lot of people are not expecting 300 speed Mo Longs. But the Mo Long and the Wusa are two different... like. Molong being like 300 speed and then the Wusa being like 300 and what was it 344 like there's a big gap for things to cut at that point so I wonder if he could just make the Wusa violent and not have that opportunity to get cut and like healed or whatever like we saw the segment in the other uh in the other battle uh cut the cut the Molong Wusa so I'm sure he has. I'm sure he has a specific reason, right? It's just uh, kind of unfortunate to see, kind of unfortunate to see anything like any two-shot combo being so far apart in their uh, their speeds. Again, he said he doesn't abuse Nana, but we see another uh, we see another Nana, and then we have the Juno Feng Yan again, and the uh, the Laika. So Laika gets banned because Laika is a strong combo. So this is this is kind of what he said before. He said. Um, you know, he picks the, the Lycas into the Leos because Lyca is ruined with very, very little speed and just a lot of uh, efficiency overall. So he picks the Lycas into the Leos. All these 
LD teams, man. All these LD teams. I mean, you kind of need the efficiency to even be able to uh, counterattack these LD teams. It's like nothing. It's like no, no damage there with the Molong. I mean, he, he really couldn't do any damage, right? So let's see what winds up happening here. Gets the Shatters. Do they get <laughs> lots of Revenges? Okay. Revenges stuns. Let's see what winds up happening here. Good old Kurt. Oh my god, Crit Rate Molong is, 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 is not working in your favor right now. Crit Rate Molong against Ragdoll. Yeah, this is this is this is gonna go great. It's gonna go great. Fantastic. Alright. So let's see. I mean Nana's going down. Right? Sequential attack. Good thing he's got that. <laughs> Good thing he's got the crit rate on there. Lulz. And I wonder if this is just going to be a... I was going to say, I wonder if this is going to be a Juno solo. I guess we'll see. So he definitely has skill too. So he's probably just going to try to... That was... that. I mean, that was risky. That was risky. Just additional damage artifacts. This is just a showcase of additional damage artifacts right now. Because the Feng Yen... The Feng Yen, Molong, and Juno, all very, very strong with additional damage artifacts. Those are the units that he's using. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of Praha as well. But this is just, this is more of a showcase of, like, additional damage artifacts is OP, guys. I don't know how many other ways to say it, but this is, this is, this is getting this guy, the efficiency on those artifacts is getting this guy super high rank. I feel like this person knows who he's fighting. He picks the Juno. Oh, maybe he, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just wants to pick the Juno because he was, he was picking the, uh, the Wusa. So let's see how he fares without the Juno. And I like that we're seeing actually a lot of Riley today. Because I want people to I want people to realize that this is a solid unit. Like Comptos gave us a really good uh, fusion unit. You know, there, there's other good fusion units. I'm not saying that that's the only good fusion unit. I'm just saying like it's nice that Comptos gave us a good fusion unit. I want people to like realize that it's not like oh it's just a fusion unit. You can't actually use this in anything. Like no you can definitely use this in things. So let's see if the <laughs> let's see Juno versus Feng Yan. So he goes for the Juno. He's very scared of that Juno. He knows the ultimate power of the uh, of the Juno. So at this point, I think that he's in a good spot. Let's see how much additional damage artifacts is he going to go for the Riley? No, he goes for the uh, Ragdoll. I feel like I would be scared to go for the uh, for the Ragdoll though, because I don't want I I I personally I mean that's the damage dealer that's the threat, but. I don't want him to get to 30%. That's why he didn't go for it there. Because he didn't want it to get back down into torrent range. And do that just ignore defense torrent. Right? Because then he could have just gone for the, uh, the Feng Yan. Nuke that down. And he wouldn't have to worry about any defense breaks there. So that's why, that's why he was like, he could have done extra damage to the Ragdoll. But he chose to switch his targets. And he's trying to play very specifically around that 30% range. With the uh, with the Dragonites. Next match, first pick Mo Long. So first picks Mo Long, opponent. I mean, he he was picking first pick Wusa before. I'm not sure why he specifically decided to switch. Maybe he knows a little bit more about his opponent, so that's why he went for the Mo Long, for the Mo Long instead of the Wusa. Uh, maybe he knows his opponent likes to pick Shung Pung, so he's like, eh, let me not pick uh, let me not pick the Wusa here. So let's see what winds up happening here. Again, another another aggressive uh, another aggressive Juno Feng Yan pick. So, although Feng Yin is uh, actually pretty strong against the... Actually very strong against the Water uh, Ryu. So. So nasty. Oh my god, that, that, that Light Beast Rider is so nasty. So OP. Okay. Takes it down, Critical Link. Don't t this is the okay. Listen, we're we're either gonna see a a, a, a Feng Yan Juno solo, or the power of Feng Yan Juno. Like this is this is clearly working for him now. This is clearly working for him. All these counters, lots of passives. It's clearly working, guys. I I I don't know if you've taken anything from this video, taken any knowledge away from it, but. I got news for you. Feng Yan Juno and additional damage artifacts. This is this is the takeaway that you should have from this. That is that is the win. That that is that that is your lesson for today. And he's just gonna blow through everything. Yeah. He's just gonna obliterate everything. Yeah. It's a lot of damage. 
And he's got the defense break on there too. Yep. There's really nothing you do. The the power of Feng and Juno. I'm seeing it. I mean, like, we're obviously seeing it. Next battle against someone fairly the same level as uh, as he is. Again, another Juno, another Feng Yan. And Samoth. Okay, so let's see how he does with the Samoth. So the Samoth last pick, kind of figure we're gonna... I'm actually surprised he picked Samoth into here specifically. I really am. Okay, he gets some stuns though. That was clutch stuns. I really am surprised he picked the Samoth into here. Because this team is not necessarily super squishy. Like, he was saying that the Samoth that he's picking into super squishy stuff. Wow, that if this went down fast. Or maybe maybe it's squishier than I... These things seem to be going down faster than I, uh, than I expected him to. Maybe he knows something that I don't. So, entirely possible. Yeah, that, that wasn't even close. That wasn't even close. He sees the Nana first pick. He goes into a Molong Wusa. He's going to go snipe something out. Uh, let's see what they wind up banning the Molong the leader skill right that was that was the strongest leader skill on their side so he does have the bulwark combination he's got the bulwark uh ikari's combination that he's going to use against let's see what he winds up uh doing with it doesn't get the strip stuns so let's see going for the wusa okay it's gonna be the first target and he's going to go one after. Oh, it's not going to be the first target. Feng Yan's going to be the first target. But Feng Yan survives. So this is an efficient... This is this is just all about the efficiency right now. And then Feng Yan does not survive anymore. Okay. But this Laika... I feel like... Okay. I feel like the Laika is just going to wind up soloing now. So what all we're seeing really is... He likes to play with passive units a lot. He likes to play with the Juno and additional damage, right? Uh, he likes to play with the Juno. He likes to play with the Feng Yan. He likes to play with the uh, the Laika. He likes to play with things like that. I shouldn't say just all passive units because he's playing with Mo Long. He's playing with the uh, the Wusa as well. So not just all passive units. But the Diana is kind of in a bad spot here. Yeah, I feel like actually he probably doesn't even need to go for the Diana. I wonder if I would have gone for the... It, it, I, he already won this. I mean, it's it's two v three, but he already won. Yeah, he already he already won that. I feel like maybe I would have played a little bit differently. Not that it's any better or worse specifically. I just I I would have gone for the Akaris. I would have been more concerned about the Akaris than the uh, the Diana. But either way, I feel like it was already like this. Like is just so strong here that uh, I feel like it was already game. They're just going to do so much damage. And they have to multi-hit. And how are they going to multi-hit? So, it really, really doesn't matter. There's nothing she could do. Nothing she could do. Mo Long Juno, first two picks. And again, he's just he's picking the same team. He's picking the same stuff. For the, for the most part, the same stuff. Okay, bans out the Wusa. Uh, let's see what winds up happening here, right? So, Fate of Destruction. Not even Will Runes. Not even... I mean, like... We already saw that there wasn't will runes on the Molong and the Feng Yan, but let's see what winds up happening here. Molly's passive kicked in. So that was a little bit lucky that the Molly passive kicked in. He doesn't even go for the Oberon. He just goes for... I would be scared of the Oberon in general. I'd want to take that down as fast as possible. I mean, like, I get that the Ragdoll... Uh, you know, is the, the Molong's activating the Ragdoll. The uh, Juno's activating the Ragdoll. So... And Oberon already did his uh, did his skill three, so I'm sure that that's why that's the reason that he uh, that he went for the Ragdoll first. And then opponent just concedes. Opponent just concedes against a Molly Juno Feng Yan. But he did also get lucky with that um, with that Oberon glancing and not actually uh, actually critting on the Feng Yan. Next battle, same player, same player. So they already know what each other are uh, are going to use. Picks out the Molly. Doesn't want to have to deal with that. Doesn't bother using the Oberon. Okay. Bans out the Nana. Let's the LDs through. Bans out the Wusa. Let's see what happens with the Sekhmet. So he doesn't he said he doesn't use Sekhmet that much, but he's using it in this uh in this battle. Let's see if he lands this against the Ciara. He does. Okay. Reckless Assault against the Gianna. And the Molly doesn't have a uh, very high attack age. So as soon as that Feng Yan moves, he's just going to finish that Gianna off. 
his tech bar. Bye bye, Gianna. And then he's going to. Ciara can just keep proccing. So he's got to go for the CR next. Resists. Gets the resist. Okay, so he just goes for the one. He, he just goes for the ragdoll because it has the defense break. I think that he's probably more concerned about the CR though than the ragdoll. Or I feel like I would be more concerned about the CR than the ragdoll. Or maybe he doesn't need to be concerned about that because he's got so much tankiness on this Fengen that he's not really too worried. See, that's why I would have been more concerned about the CR than the ragdoll, personally. Because uh, you need that crazy, uh, crazy clutch OP Fengen. So. 2,000 damage with each hit. Not bad. Does not get the proc, though. And, and, well, he's got accuracy on slot 6 for segment. So, that's why he's, uh, that's why he's actually landing things, but... I feel like if I put accuracy on slot 6, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> like, I have accuracy on slot 6 and accuracy in artifacts, and also, I prayed to the RNG gods for extra accuracy. It's like, resists every time. I don't know. Maybe it's probably not, but it just feels like that sometimes. It, it just feels like things resist constantly. So, so first pick Chungpung, and then he still go he still goes for the Wusa. I wouldn't have gone for the Wusa here. Bans out the Tian Lang. I wouldn't have gone for the Wusa, man. That's so scary to br bring t uh, Wusa into two two strips. Chungpung's so strong against that. Let's see what winds up happening here. I mean, it's gonna be rough for him to actually come out with a win here. I mean, the, the Juno, as soon as she gets a turn, uh, she's not going to get a turn right away, but as soon as she gets a turn, she's going to do, uh, she's going to heal everything, so. You know what? The opponent, though, does not have a lot of damage, so eventually, he's just going to keep cycling turns. That's, that's, that's what the opponent did uh, that's kind of working against him, is he, he has defense breaks with the Xiongpeng, but Aside from that, he does not have a lot of damage. So as long as um, as long as Nuke can survive for a decent amount of time, there is going to be a comeback eventually. Because not a, there's there's no defense breaks, there's no defense breaks, and the the Juno is going to do some work here. Yeah, it's just the passives. Like I feel like Wusa is just pointless in this match, but it's just those passives are going to keep activating. Passives are going to keep being uh, super strong. So let's see. I mean, we're already seeing that. But if they had more defense breaks on the opponent's side, this would have been a different situation. So that's why you got guys. This is, this is why you have to pick Beth in your RTA match. He's like, shut up, Ego. Shut up about Beth. I'm not picking Beth. All right. I mean, he's doing still some decent damage. He's got the like 1200s with that uh, Praha, though. So with the, uh, with the skill one. Is that enough to take... Oh, he got a violent proc. Okay. Uh, but she's just going to get another turn and another turn. So here's, here's something that I want you guys to note. Is that if the opponent had more additional... If, if they were more aggressive in farming artifacts, had more additional damage in their artifacts, um, they would have been able to take that molly out. That would have been a slightly different situation there. Uh, but also, he did not have... He only had a few defense breaks with the Xiongpeng, it, and, and they were kind of lacking damage. They had a lot of control. A lot, a lot, a lot of control. But um, with all those passives, he was kind of lacking uh, lacking as much damage. And if he had more damage, he could have taken things out uh, faster. It's this guy again. He keeps getting matched up against him. This is the guy with the uh, Ragdoll and the Oberon. He does not pick Ragdoll Oberon just yet. Picks the Lulu. Okay. So let's see what winds up happening here. Opts to not even go for his LDs. I think he may be tilted. He's like, I, I don't like the way that this is going so far. So let's uh, let's see what winds up happening here. The thing is with Nana, I like to pick Nana with some kind of threat, some kind of damage. And I feel like, I mean, he does have really good, the, the, the benefit of this is that he does have really good additional damage with the artifacts on the oracles. But aside from that, is dangerous to pick Nana with uh, without much damage because you need to kill things with Nana, right? Because then that's what's uh, get, gonna give her some more soul beads. So, so he winds up killing the uh, the Gianna, which just gives uh yeah. It's just the additional damage is so strong with with his artifacts. That's that's really what's propelled him to the next level. Is just using multi hitters, using passives, strong passives. 
additional damage and artifacts just trying to get as much of and efficiency just overall efficiency trying to get his units as efficient as possible he's like he, he doesn't have the crazy lds he's got one ld he's got the cadiz but he's not really even like do we even see i don't think we even saw any cadiz today um so anyway that's it for this one hope you guys enjoyed it hope you guys got a little bit of uh info out of it because there are players that are up in it's not easy to get up climb this high climb into g3 without uh you know some of the more op units some of the more op lds but we're seeing that he's he's just said like okay what is in my box that's going to be the most effective that fits my play style the best and he's like juno feng yen fits my play style the best it's the most effective for me. I'm going to farm a crap ton of artifacts. Like I said, he's just farming artifacts nonstop over and over and over and over again. He's not even farming dungeons right now. He has the dungeon teams. That's not an issue. Um, it's just he's farming artifacts nonstop because he sees all the value in that additional damage, pure damage, it basically ignored defense um, with the unit that he's using all the time. So he's like, what's going to benefit my account the most? What's going to benefit the things that I use the most? It's getting that most efficiency out of the additional damage artifacts so that's what i'm going to be farming but anyway i uh, just wanted to show this to you guys so you can just see a little bit more in depth behind the scenes on a g3 account that doesn't have like a crazy ridiculous box just trying to make the best of what they have trying to play efficiently trying to ruin their units with the most uh the most efficient stats possible but anyway that's it for this one hope you guys enjoy i'll see you as always in the next one